How's it going everyone? ASC Finners here, back in Wiltshire. We are seeing Melksham Town against my good friend Malvern Town today. Hello Tom. Hello. It's quite a contrast to last week. We drove all the way to Salford, right by the city. Today we are next to a huge field of corn. <laughs> you can tell we're back in the West Country. So, sums up the variety on ground to ground. Stain is right ahead of us. Let's have a look. There it is. The pitch next to Melksham's ground. Here we are then. So we just got in, in the club bar as Wolves beat Liverpool. It's a very nice bar and here we are. Not normally this high up for this level. There we go, Melksham Town. Tenor to get in. Four quid for the pit and badge. Right, here we are, Tom. Bloody hell. Cheers. There's a selection of honours. Oh, got a nice little kitchen in here, too. Fair play. It's a very nice and unique stand they got here. Let's do a customary circuit. It's the MTFC Derby today. Oh, well, the penalty spot's excited to see me. Oh, well, you don't see screens at games at this level very often. It's funny because I remember going to Shamrock Rovers, suggesting they could have a screen, and got in an argument with a fan who says it's a ridiculous idea. They can do it at this level, they can at other places. Onwards. Right, so we've got a couple of members of the Melksham team uh, to interview. Uh, why don't you start by introducing yourselves? I'm Jamie Bush, I'm the uh, kit man. I'm Ash Wheeler and I'm uh, Jamie's assistant kit man. Oh, brilliant. So, um, obviously, I'm, I'm new to Melksham. It's my first time here. What can I expect to find here today? Good crowd, uh, decent football, um, good point, yeah. and a good yeah. pasty. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely people, lovely people flowing football, yeah. really good pitch. I think they're usually a decent crowd as well. Yeah. And, and what, uh, what does it mean to you two to work for this club? Um, for me, it's, it's, it's good because I literally live not even half a mile down the road. So I used to do it when we were at the old ground in the town many moons ago and had a little break and then come back. And when we've got a facility like this, it just makes it a little bit more special. We've got a lot a lot to give here. Um, and yeah, it's, it, I don't know about you, but... I'm the same, yeah, so I started as just a supporter. I used to go and watch the football. Yeah. Um, went on to the committee and I moved up to Kitman. So yeah, it's, um, Really good, yeah. It's our club. Yeah, we're proud, proud of it. Yeah. Okay, and in the um, time you've worked for Melksham, what is what are your favourite memories? Uh, definitely winning the Western League, going up into the Southern League was yeah very very special. I did it with uh, no budget whatsoever. All lads that lived in Melksham played for Melksham. That, yeah, that, that was a special time. That was good. Amazing, yeah, yeah. So I think the, the history of the club is the first time we've been in the seven league. Yeah. So it's a big, yeah, it's a big momentous occasion for the club. Yeah, and obviously, yeah, you've reached heights that um, you've never reached before with this league. But finally, what uh, are the plans for the future for the club? Definitely pushing on. Um, you know, you look around at the facilities we've got, the players we've got, the supporters. If anything, we sort of underachieved at the moment. We need to be to be definitely in the league above but I think looking around at all the, all the leagues at southern league level um, I think this is the most difficult league. It's a tough it's league, it's a tough league, league. Yeah, but yeah, I agree with Asher. The players we've got this season, I mean, they're all quality players and all yeah. the player league above. Yeah, so, definitely. So this could be the season. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a like for your time. Best of luck yes, today. Melksham Town were founded in 1876 and were founding members of the Wiltshire League in 1894. They would win Division 1 in 1904 then going on to win the Wiltshire Senior Cup. After finishing as runners-up in the league several times, they would win the Wiltshire Senior Cup again in 1970, and moved up to the Western League in 1974. They would win another Wiltshire Cup in 1978, and the next year won Division 1, sealing promotion to the Premier Division of the Western League. The 80s saw further success, with them winning the Wiltshire Premier Shield four times. They were relegated in 1988. They would sink further in 1993 to the Premier Division of the Wiltshire Football League. However, they achieved a double with the League and Senior Knockout Cup the next season, and won promotion to the Premier Division of the Western League in 1997. Two more Wiltshire Premier Shields followed in 1998 and 2000, and they added two further Wiltshire Senior Cups in 2003 and 2008. They were relegated in 2010 
but made an immediate return the next season. The 2010s saw them add even more silverware, as they won the Wiltshire Senior Cup in 2013, 2014 and 2016, also winning the Western League Premier Division in 2015. They were denied promotion, but they moved to a new home in 2017, in the form of 7.3 million stadium called Oakfield. With this, they were able to seal promotion in 2018, and have remained in the Southern League system ever since. Overall, they have won one Western League Premier Division title, two Western League Division 1 titles, one Wiltshire Football League Premier Division, one Wiltshire League Senior Knockout Cup, one Wiltshire League Division 1, six Wiltshire Premier Leagues, and eight Wiltshire Senior Cups. And a bit of trivia, in the 1968-1969 season, Gareth Lewis scored 72 goals at the club, a record that still stands today and is unlikely to ever be beaten. So those are our hosts, Melksham Town. Let's have a look inside their home, Oakfield Stadium. Well, this club is going to get excellent points to welcome already. We've um, just spent about half an hour chatting to some people at the food stall downstairs. A chap called Stuart. We didn't ask, he said, come to us at the end of the game, show you around the dressing rooms. And a the old man in the Melksham shirt came up to us and said, you groundhoppers, take these. We've got loads of them. So gone out of their way to make us feel welcome. Lovely club, and I'll just show you something. They said they got loads of teams that play on all these pitches. They got the rugby club there, over there behind the fences. They got um, about ten football pitches. He was saying, and they let them out to local clubs for free. Could easily make loads of money from letting them out, but they do it for free because they want people to have the opportunity to play football. Fair play. That is a community club. There's Malvern and the Na Blood Buzz Ohio by the National playing. It's a good day. Take it to far. When you ordered the Beatles off Wish. <laughs> if you say so. Oh, did you tell him about it? Yeah. 23 minutes in and Melksham take the lead. Their four was cut inside and curled it into the net off the post, Iron Robin style. Once again, not a nil-nil. Not exactly the ideal score I wanted, but Melksham won, Malvern nil. Melksham double their lead, they've countered and curled it brilliantly into the corner again. I think that's probably the three-point seal for them. There's daylight between them and Malvern now, 2-0. Half time soon after Melksham seconds, they've been the better team. Malvern had one or two chances, but never quite looked like getting one in. I think Melksham probably see this out comfortably, but it's a game of two halves, you never know. Half time, Melksham two, more from the middle. So, wondering what drinks they've got available? A can of Coke for Tom and hot chocolate, about three quid for in total. Normally, hot chocolates are normally hotter than the sun. And this is no exception. <laughs> We enter the last course of the game, Melksham remain on top. Malvern did just have a good header that sadly just went just over, but I feel like Melksham probably get a third and seal it once and for all. Doubt Malvern will get anything out of this. Still 2 0. So, always my predictions are wrong. It is my main man, the man I sponsored, Jack Watts. Cross has come in, he's clipped in just over 10 minutes to go. Game on, 2 1. I can't believe this. Moments later, Levi Francis hits it from range. And it's phone in the top corner. Commentator's curse, well and truly on again. Melksham two, more than two. Well, a thrilling game ends to all. Fair play to Malvern for not throwing in the towel because I never would have expected that at half time. They fought, they parried, and they chased for the winner, but sadly wasn't to be. But I think they were bitten your hand off if you offered them that at half time. Fair play to Jack Watts for going goal. And I headed the ball as well. It came over here in the end. 
get, heads it back to the Malvern players, one of them commented, sign him up. So, thrilling game, lots of cards, lots of aggro between the teams, but a thrilling game is finished. Melksham 2, Malvern 2. That concludes an enthralling day. Brilliant game, brilliant club, very nice welcome. I'm really glad I came here. It's, I, I didn't really know too much about what to expect, but they've made me very happy, made me feel right at home. So Melksham, you've made a friend in me. Hopefully I'll come back soon. Always nice to see my friends from Malvern as well. Chatted to loads of people I've recognised before. And Jack Watts, good to see you on the score sheet and nice to meet you in person at last. So all the best the rest of the season for both teams. Hopefully I'll see you both again soon. We're gonna head home now, but first let us rate the experience. So we will start off as always with welcome and absolutely stupendous welcome from everyone at Melksham. It didn't start the best because we turned up at the gate and they didn't have a car machine, so it was awkward getting in. But after that, it was absolutely amazing. Every member of staff we spoke to took so much time to engage with us. You can see some of them went for an interview. Um, we sat by that food stall and chatted to Melksham staff about ground hopping for a good half hour or so. And they're really interested about the places we've been, telling us all about the club. We found out so much about them. They gave us so much information and were generally so interested. And like one of the guys we spoke to at the food bit kind of said like, you know, if you've got time at the end of the game, you can go around the dressing rooms and get some pictures of you know, the setup in there. Unfortunately, that wasn't something we did have time for in the end, but it's the fact that they were willing to offer that to us. Now it says a lot. And again, we didn't even ask. He offered that straight up. So that kind of just sums up how welcoming they were to us. There were those clubs that see a ground hopper and they like roll out the red carpet for us and they didn't have to do that, but it's so greatly appreciated. The thanks they'll go to to accommodate a ground hopper and there was that old man who gave us the programs for free. So yeah, they go to so much effort to accommodate ground hoppers and that's incredibly appreciated. So many people we chat to were so welcoming, so you will definitely get an excellent welcome when you come to Melksham Town. Fair play, thank you for making me feel at home. 9.5 out of 10 for welcome. Food and drink, I like the fact that they had two separate stalls, one in the bar, one downstairs. The outside one kind of had like the more basic options, whereas the one in the bar was hot food. They had the options they needed to, thankfully I'd eaten before, so I wasn't like depending on the food they had available uh, to eat for lunch. All the options were fine, it wasn't anything extravagant, but they provided what you needed to, nice variety of drinks, and could easily get a snack as well, and you know, it's good they got their own section devoted to pastries and stuff. Sadly, it didn't seem like they had anything like a veggie burger, unless I'm mistaken. They thought it out a bit, and yeah, I don't think many people would be disappointed with the food there. So I'll probably give the food and drink a 6 out of 10. Atmosphere, this is the one that will get a lower score, but again, that's not anything personal Melksham. Like I always say for this level, I don't expect grounds at this level to get a good atmosphere score. Realistically, compared to like atmospheres I have seen, there wasn't really anything. I didn't expect it, but I think, again, it would be a disservice to skew the scores based on the league they're in. So I think Nancy gets a 2 out of 10, but please don't out personally, Melksham, that's not an attack on you. That's just what I have to do to give a fair score. So yeah, it's a 2 out of 10 for atmosphere. Stadium, it was yeah a really cool ground and that giant stand they had was really unique for this level they've clearly thought it out well the fact they've got a screen they've got three different stands you can go in so you know you can go in the big one or of the other two and be sheltered from the elements and a good place to watch football with a variety of views i absolutely love the fact that they had a balcony by the bar that you could watch a game from i don't recall seeing that kind of thing at non the ground so it's a very well thought out stadium absolutely incredible club bar and I think they've done absolutely superbly in terms of stadium. I think there will be room to grow. You know, the fact that also with the grounds, as I was saying, they've got like all those pitches around. It really helps the community grow. They're encouraging kids to play football and build a connection with them. So it's an incredible stadium for this level. I'm sure there'll be more developments to come. So I'll probably give it a 5.5 out of 10. Again, that might seem like a low score when I've been complimentary, but you have to understand I've been to Wembley and Old Trafford and Villa Park on this series. So I think 5.5 is a very good score for this level. And finally, value for money. So a ticket was £10, pin badge £4, but all the food and drinks are very reasonably priced. Like I said, it was only 40p to get a lime and soda. That's an absolute bargain. I've never seen anywhere 
do stuff so cheap. But yeah, even if the ticket and badge were mildly more expensive than I'm used to this uh, first level, I think everything else balanced out. So it's it's really good value for money. And I think, again, you see a really unique ground and get a good experience and a really good welcome. So I didn't feel ripped off. I felt very happy. And because the club was so nice to me, it gives you that incentive to like buy things from them and help them grow. So I'll probably give the value for money an 8 out of 10. They offer a very good experience and you know it's always nice to help the club out. So that was Melksham Town. What an absolutely wonderful day there. Thank you, Melksham. You've been so accommodating, so welcoming. I definitely will have to come back because, you know, like I said, you made me and Tom feel like royalty. It was an absolutely wonderful place to watch a game. I didn't know much about it coming in, but I've been really, really pleased with what I've seen and I thoroughly recommend it to fellow ground hoppers. Hopefully I'll come back soon keep doing what you're doing you've got a lovely group of people there you offer an absolutely wonderful experience and you're doing a lot for your local community so fair play keep it up hopefully you'll keep going up the leagues and keep succeeding i wish you all the best i'll see you soon thank you melksham town thank you all for watching i've been afc finners see you next time and stick with us as we go ground to ground afc finners out